Hello, hello. This is Dynamic Patching in Pure Data Vanilla. So as you can see here, it is creating these voice objects and then assigning them a number and automatically attaching it to this receive object on top and the send object on the bottom. And this is the patch that's doing everything. Um, I guess it looks pretty complicated, but the underlying concept is actually uh, pretty simple. So I have a couple of other examples as well. Like this one. This is a patch that's creating toggle boxes in a circle. And uh, these are real objects. Each of them is connected to a send, as we can see here. They're all numbered, just like the other patch. And while it's running, it's automatically generating these and connecting them to the correct toggle object. So um, if we click one, like this one here, we can actually get the data out of it. But you'll notice that when we change this, it clears all of these toggles. And that's because I haven't figured out how to delete individual objects. I've only figured out how to clear the entire sub patch and then rebuild it. And so um, in order to do any of this, like clearing the sub patch or creating new objects and whatnot, I'm using what's called an internal message. It's this particular type of message in PD, kind of like this. This is the one to clear the patch, actually. So by clicking that, I cleared the whole patch. Um, it's kind of a bug that it leaves the uh, wires on there. I think that just has to do with it uh, having graph on parent turned on. But um, yeah, you've, you've probably seen like PD DSP1 or DSP0. And what this does, uh, if you watch the DSP button on there, when I click this, it turns it off. And so uh, these type of messages control pure data directly instead of the patch, it just controls pure data as a whole. And so there are several of these that I think a lot of people don't know about. And a lot of them, in my experience, don't actually work correctly. So you'll see here on the pure data info site, this is the undocumented PD internal messages where it says note documentation for each message is missing with a little frowny face. Uh, most of the things that PD can do, like the editor can do, you can do in a patch message. And uh, the ones that I like to use are object for creating an object in a sub patch and connect for connecting objects together which is how um, I'm dynamically creating the wires in these patches. So uh, to give a better example, I have this simpler patch here that I can bring up. And in this patch, I'm dynamically generating a receive object. You may have noticed that send objects have a second inlet that allow you to control what the name of the send is but uh, receives don't have that. So if you create a send dynamically, there was no way to create a receive, but using these internal messages, you can do just that because you just create the object box for receive and then give it the argument of whatever the name uh, is that you want. So if I change this and then click here, you can see it. Uh, change that. The way this patch works is it clears the entire sub patch and then it creates the two objects and finally connects them together. So the internal messages for this are clear, object, and connect. And you have to define the name of your sub patch in these messages. So we do PD dash and then the name. In this case, I just have it named subpatch, but you can name it whatever you want. 
And then down here, I do the same thing, give it the name of the sub patch. And then for object, you do OBJ, and then the X, Y coordinates where you want it to appear, the name of the object, and then after that, any arguments that you want the object to have. In this case, since we're making a receive object, I gave it dollar sign one so that it uses this symbol up here, which is how it makes receive, and then the name is thing or whatever we type up there. And down here, creating another object for the send. In this case, it's at x, y, uh, 10, 40, which is why it's lower than the other one. And it's a send object with the name dollar sign one dash sub patch dash out. And that dollar sign one is getting replaced by the patch ID here, which is dollar sign zero. And so after that, we connect the two together using this message down here. So this connect message down here um, looks kind of confusing at first, but in order to understand this, we need to understand how PD files are saved. So I have this little demo patch here. And if we open up the text file for this, it's actually pretty straightforward. So the first line here defines the window. This is the um, width and height. This is the X, Y position uh, on the monitor. So if I reload that, you can see that it moved. And then we have the objects down here. So it lists all of the objects and then it lists all of the connections between the objects. And so the connections work going off of the index of the object and the patch. So this is object zero, this is object one, object two, and object three. That's just because of how it's saved here in the file. And so this is the first object and this is the object it's connected to. This is the outlet of the first object, and then this is the inlet of the object it's connected to. So this is object zero, which is OSC, outlet zero, which is the only outlet, connected to object one, which is the multiplication, inlet zero, which is the left inlet. And then uh, the rest of the connections work the same way. You can see that we have two um, connections coming off of the same outlet, going to different inlets on the same object. This is uh, this connection here and that connection there, going to the DAC, because uh, DAC is object two. And so when you're doing this, you just have to make sure to remember that this is zero and then it indexes uh, upwards from there. Also, um, I think this is saved in order that these objects are created. Um, it doesn't always turn out that way, but in the case of this patch, it's worked every time. So um, that might just be because there are only two objects here, but I'm not really sure. In this case, what I'm doing here is creating the receive object first and then creating the send object second. So I know that object zero is going to be the receive and then object one is going to be the send. So those are the basics of dynamic patching. And uh, this is the most useful patch that I've been able to come up with simply because you can't change the name of a receive object in, in any other way. Um, if we go back to the other patch here with the voices, you can see that I just have several messages in this one message box. They're separated by a semicolon here. Uh, this just saves some space so that you don't have to have a trigger object triggering multiple things um, like this. But the rest of this patch is uh, mostly to deal with like making sure that it goes down to the next line every 10 objects that are created. And then I'm going through this array to select the um, what pitches to uh, select from. 
And so I just have a bunch of counters around here, which is clogging this up. Um, I'm also controlling the volume here so that when it deletes everything, it doesn't cause a spike in the audio signal. And um, it's important to note that when you delete these, so when you clear this patch, um, it doesn't keep playing that audio. It'll just immediately cut it off, you know, because it's disconnecting the wire that was connected to that. So um, this isn't super practical. I would think that maybe you could use this if you had a synthesizer where you didn't know how many voices you needed and then it would just keep adding more and more. But then maybe when um, it stops playing and there's no more audio coming out of it, you can clear the patch to get rid of all the voices that have been stored up. Um, if you could delete individual objects, so like the individual voices, once they stop, have them get deleted, that would be great. But I can't figure out how to do that. Um, the only message that looked um, like it would be able to help, or rather a string of messages, would be to click on the object that you want and then cut it but i can't get the click function to work it's only focusing on the window for me it won't actually click anything but cut does work however so if you like select this and then do pd dash uh, what is this called voices cut you can see that it cut the object away um, I think paste probably works. Yeah, I put it in the same spot. So the problem is that the click message doesn't work as far as I can tell. So if we do pd dash voices click, and then it takes five arguments. And I think that the first two are X, Y position, and then this is what mouse button. This is the modifier, like shift, control, or alt. And then I'm not sure what this one is. I was looking at the source code, and even there, it just seemed like a magic number. But um, you can see that it focuses the window, but it, it doesn't actually click anywhere. We can, for example, put a giant uh, bang in here. Just make this huge and just like put it around zero, zero. So if you were to click up here, it would flash, but nothing happens. And if we try and do like a double click, like um, this, where we delay the bang to click again, you can see that nothing happens. So if I change some of these numbers, you know, whatever it is that they do, um, it just doesn't make a difference. So I tried a bunch of numbers in here. I did um, like everything from zero to three for all of these numbers in all possible combinations. I did just random numbers and that didn't work. Um, I, like I said, I, I looked at the source code and just couldn't figure it out because it seems like um, what I said would work, like X, Y, the mouse button, and then modifier, and then some magic number. But I think it's just not implemented. Maybe it just doesn't work in the Windows version. So if you have PD on a Mac or Linux, you could try it out and see for yourself. So there you go. That's dynamic patching, at least uh, as much of it as I can figure out. If you come up with something super awesome related to this, be sure to let me know. I'm always interested to see what people make in pure data. All right, thanks for watching.